All right, all right, all right. Let's see who we have here. Oh my goodness! Oh, it's it's Neil. <laughs> Very large. Hey, can you hear me? My, my mic is not quite working. I have a mic going on. Can you still we hear? Me? Vitsitsin. Can you still hear me or no? Uh, yes, unfortunately. Uh, um, yeah. And uh, we have a lot of beautiful people here today, and Rich, uh, <laughs> Mister Rich Rosen, a big biller extraordinaire, uh, or something like that. But welcome to the Headhunters and Boxers talking smack, people. Yes, welcome. Yes, I'm excited. Thank the music. I'm me. excited every time, even if I'm not. When that music comes on, I my body wants to jam, <laughs> jam on it. Your 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 body your body does move very well, Neil. I will give you that. <laughs> people are worried about our bromance, David. I've got a couple of comments from people during the week, and a shout out to Mario, who's just uh, loving our show. And uh, I figured I'd give him a little shout out because I'm sure I'll be watching. Uh, uh, is, that, is that Mario R? Uh, yes, and but I I know him by Mario K. But yes, it would be the same Mario. But he uh, can't get enough of it. But our bromance, I'm a little worried, Rich. Um, uh, you gotta behave because we don't want any of us to be jealous. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> you know, we, you gotta watch. We don't want you playing favorites. Well, I tell you what. Let me. Uh, you know, uh, some reason I think our live here is 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 very delayed. Um, oh no, there it is. Okay, got it. Man, I tell you what. Um, anyway, that said, let's not talk about the difficulties behind the behind the uh, show. Let's talk about you guys because that's what I think people are interested in. No one cares about me. They care about Neil Lebovitz and 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 uh, and, and Rich. Rich, uh, Rich Rosen, our first fucking guest. Richie, Rich Rosen. Nice. Yes, guest I'm number one. Here. You're looking very casual, Rich. What do you just got a little uh, built in microphone and webcam there and just showing? <laughs> this is this is how I work all day long. I would figure George, with all the money you're billing, you would have some crazy setup there. What do you got? Like I mean, a Mac there? What do you what, what, what's I your technology? Nice big, I got a nice big 27 inch Mac and a oh, a, of course, a, you do. Polycom 330, and uh, I just talk on speakerphone all day long. This is uh, my natural habitat. Let's not talk about how, how how big you are, Rich. No, no one, you know. Look, ever since my penis reduction surgery, I went down. Wow, to, I, I went down to I, a modest, a, guy... a modest twelve yeah. A mo <laughs> millimeter. Yes, yeah. Wow, we're completely <laughs> going to make this an all guy yeah. show soon because the girls are totally. We had a really great audience on week one, yeah, and they slowly disappeared. I think we lost them when we were talking about cleaning out my anus. Uh, with the bidet. I think that was the tipping point, to be honest with you. <laughs> that was when we jumped the proverbial <laughs> shark. That could have been when you jumped the shark in episode two, I think, Jerry. Yeah. Man, we, we jumped the jumped shark the fast. Bidet shark. We really did. Well, you know, really? uh, funny enough, speaking of this, I was actually thinking about either in this show or maybe in my podcast, something like that. But I, I was thinking, like, man, I want to, I want a section where you provide like a daily, like a tip. And I'm going to call it just the, just the tip segment. <laughs> where we give just a tip on anything it could be on an emails it could be on uh rudy i don't know if i'm doing my podcast or in this or whatever but I think, uh, yeah we just gotta yeah just a tip i think that'd be a great segment for a show and we'll i don't know what people about the uh, rabbi so or the moil yeah. the guy that does a circumcision that you never the pay moil. it only takes tips yeah it's an old, <laughs> old jewish joke yeah it's a jewish dad joke old jewish joke yeah the, and the, it's, it's old joke the uh the uh the uh Lebovitzen, family. Lebovitzen. How do you say your name, Neil? Uh, you know what? It's it's uh, Lebovitz, but I go Lebovitz is my Le stage name. Lebovitz. Because it, it, everyone questions Lebovitz. It, like you can never leave a message. Lebovitz are like you know because I think Animal House was Fawn Lebovitz, and then uh, there's Annie, yeah. Annie Lebovitz. The so I think people are comfortable with that name. Whereas comfortable as they'll be, you know. Lebovitz, Lebovitz is just out there. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it makes, it makes Rosen and incredible. Patterson. I'd kill for those names. Your names easy. are beautiful. Rosen, what a great simple Jew name, you yeah, know. Yeah, it, 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 it served me well thus far. Rich Rosen, that's a good ring to it. Yeah, it's very, very easy. A Jewish name? I didn't know that. Rosen's a very Jewish name, sure. Rosen, Rosenberg, yeah. Rosenstein, Rosenheimer, Rosenman. Uh, all of Forest Hills, man. Come on, right? Come on, jeez. <laughs> you don't I think guess... he's gonna bill a million bucks not being a Jew, do you? <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this language. It sounds very we can talk about your penis all day, but we can't talk about the Jewish race. Yeah, is that? I didn't think I was um, under debate. I didn't think it was under debate. Well, all right. So, so in all seriousness, though, if you guys, if you guys just are tuning in or now, I want you guys to do me a favor, please. Uh, uh, in the on the live broadcast, I want you to show some digital love, give us some hearts and some likes because it drives the algorithm. So, uh, believe me, I did not have enough love as a child, I need it from you guys. <laughs> Neil definitely needs the love, 
Right Rich needs right to love. Needs love. We need love really badly. So please, yeah. if you're listening to this, you enjoy it. Hit likes and hearts, drives the algorithm, gets more people to watch it. And um, and we have a lot more plans for the show. We, we can talk about that after uh, we are done with our main segments uh, where we do a rich roast. But after that, we can talk about the uh, – oh, Rich, we didn't tell you this is a roast. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. You didn't get the email. <laughs> uh, but then we'll talk about some plans we have for the show coming up to make it bigger, bolder, grander, and um, just more all-around awesome. But uh, anyway, that said, um, Neil. Yes, sir. Yes. What, what, say, yes. You, what say you, sir? Uh, say I say you? it's a, it's a, a Friday. I say back to my conversation of last week with the stock market. Uh, I I hate my life financially because <laughs> no, I was I was telling you last week that I I bet against the market, which means I oh, root against bad. everyone's health and success <laughs> and 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 wonderful peace because when the market went up, I got killed because I I put everything in cash as I told you. So yesterday I couldn't be more thrilled and I'm sitting there happy, happy as can be. And like, and I'm like, the whole world is like crumbling again. This is going to mean horrific things for everyone. And, and there I am happy. So it's a horrible thing. Never, ever, ever go against like the market. It's bad. So that's, that's where I am. So can I tell you, so I, I, I used to be a stock broker. I was the youngest stock broker in the country at one point. Of course and you I, were. I, I, what I, are we? I, I was managing $150 million when I was 21 for this big broker at Dean Witter down in Virginia. And uh, so it was, which is great. So that kind of how I got into recruiting actually, because you found none of these people dealt with, dealt with uh, sales guys when they're doing research on a company. But long Dean Witter, short, love it. Yeah, it was, it was dynamite. But the, um, but it was phenomenal training for being a recruiter, that, without a doubt. But the, um, the point is the, the market, so I follow the market, I track them. Used to, I used to be super into it, obviously. So I called my broker February and said, hey, before, before I even knew COVID was going to be a big thing and crash the market, I just wanted to get out. He talks me out of it. And like two weeks later, the market tanks. I call him yesterday morning and I'm like, dude, let's, I call him, uh, was it, uh, what day is Friday? Two days ago, right before it crashed, I, right? I call him Wednesday. I'm like, listen, all right, we didn't get up the first time. We were up 10% now. Let's yeah. get out. So you didn't get out. I didn't get out again. I listened to him. I didn't get out again. And <laughs> I, it, come, listen, I, I would have completely sold after the after it. We, it made no sense. I mean, everything going. And this is one of our news stories, so I guess we'll talk about it. But it, it's one of those things where it makes no sense that we're in the middle of a pandemic. There's all these people that still we have no. And look, I'm not no doom and gloom, David. I'm with you. I'm nice and positive. Everyone makes their own destiny. But, but the if you look at it. Off Come on, market. the market was going gangbusters and and over like it's just wacky. It never makes sense, but this yeah. has been crazy. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Buy gold and I bury it in my backyard. I mean, come on, yeah. guys. Wait, wait, you could bury that with your dad with your grandpa's porn and the and, liquor and his liquor collection. Yes. So now, now we got three yeah, things going on the back there. So you're good to go. I, I invest in gold and ammunition, sirs. Me. Well, yeah, Am, that, ammo's the way to go. Bullion, my friend, or like commodity gold, or like, or like uh, gold mutual funds, like I do, which is gold. No, 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 no commodity gold, gold. Like hard, hard, hard gold, also in also in, in small little units, right? Because you know, when in the end of days, when you talk about yes, and back in the before times, and we used to do things like interview uh, uh, Jews on the on the on the Facebook, <laughs> screen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> back in the before times, <laughs> we used but to make no money. What kind of gold? Like Krugerrands? Like those like coins that you see like on TV? Like buy like the, you're we're only gonna let you get ten, only ten for each. Give me a break, right? I yeah. love that. Limit <laughs> offers. Act you now. Did you Due to the, the high demand. Did you watch the other banks on uh, Netflix? They go and find all this royal merchant gold. Oh no, yeah, I love no. that. It, I, I, well, I, I tell you what, you know, actually, you know what I invest in? I invest in my self development and training. Buy my stuff. You are a motivational. Mm -hmm. Actually, I do. Yeah. I, I I spend I probably spend fifty sixty thousand a year just on like uh just training and coaches because I, I why not right I'm 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 my I'm my own best investment. Yeah, I love that, that you had to name drop like the money drop the, the figure that I you know I drop about fifty yeah. sixty years more than a lot of you guys bill yeah. out there. Well, it's actually in pesos, in pesos in pesos in Krugerrands yeah. in the Krugerrands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, so, well, well, that said, I, I want to, let's, let's talk about, uh, Rich. Cause I think, uh, you know, really as much as I like to think that people are here or for, for, for their daily dose of DSP or, uh, or their daily dose of Neil, uh, I think people are really interested in Richie, Rich Rosen. And as much as I would love this to be a Richie roast, uh, and it certainly can turn into one if we, if we, if we want to, but, uh, let's, let's find out a bit more about 
by Rich, because I think there's a lot of uh, he's been around a lot in lots of circles and interviews and podcasts and stuff. And uh, I think a lot of people want to learn from this guy who bills like, you know, what a million a year or, or at least, you know, you know, in that range of what 700 to 800, that million a year, roughly. So how about this? Give us a, give us the overview of who you are, what you do. Oh my God. Do, do all that <laughs> and let's riff what? off that. You have not gone to interview school. This is our first guest, so we're 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 ironing this out. No, we're supposed to like feed him some stuff and and. Oh no get- no we're 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 we're, 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 we're to roach roast him. I want I want a starting point. You want to start slow. Tell us who you are. Well, if I can, I'll let me be even more. I, I I've I always get asked as a as a trainer uh, and a consultant about all these people that build a million dollars, and they always ask what the secret is, right? So I have a couple of them. What 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 would you say if you had to get three sound bites, four sound bites of the of like the real key things? Like, is it the niche? Are you hyper niched? Right. I mean, I don't know how you can't be. Yeah. Right. Niche. So, niche. so what I'm, what is it? Yeah. Niche, actually, I'm, I'm niche, niche, but I'm not hyper niche. I, I kind of think I should. Say, it'd make my life niche. much easier if I was. Um, but three sound bites. You just no no cutting corners. Stop trying to find the shortcut for stuff. Just get on the phone. Send your emails out. Good, you know, good or bad. We, Dave and I were talking about earlier. Good or bad, just send your emails out, make your phone calls, and just and just be focused. Make be planned. That's it. How That's niched the, are you? How niched are you? And I, niche, it's, I mean, niche. I, I, I niche. like it niche. The Jews when we call niche, it, uh, it, it sounds <laughs> too fancy. German. Right, niche. Right. Ah, no. Do you, do you, do you call it quinoa or quinoa? If you're, uh, if you say, if you say quinoa, right. niche, my mom calls it quinoa. Then you like, it, then, yeah. then you're, right. you're too It's one of them their quinoas, the quinoas uh, uh, quinoa. vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. one of them their pastas, uh, the quinoas. Niche. That's some bullshit. It's niche. Niche is how they say niche. it in, in, in Britain. In Britain. In Britain. In the UK. You say, you say cachet or catchy? Don't mock. This is catchy. this is a very ugly side of you today. Say melee right. or melee? Well, let's, melee. let's hear. I want to hear about the niche. The niche. What's your niche? Yo, Rich, what's your niche? What's your niche? niche? My niche, I just I do sales reps, sales engineers, sales leaders, executives, all in software, but across all of software. All right, interesting. All right. Well, it's definitely more, it's it's somewhere between a niche and a hyper niche. It's more niche than 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 many. You know what? There's a lot of guys who just do security, just yeah, yeah, yeah. So which would be quite frankly makes my would make my life a thousand times easier, but you just get pulled in all these directions because I'm a big believer in good sales guys can sell anything. So let yeah. me do the math there. If it would make it a thousand times easier and you're a million dollar biller, that would make you a billion dollar biller. That or, would be or you would be for not doing it. <laughs> so do that for one year and you're done. Billion yeah, dollars okay. in billings. I you make all the talk show. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, all right. So, so let's say this. Let me ask you this, Rick. So one of the one of the big issues I have sometimes when I see people um, you know, ask, hey, how, how do I succeed? And people say, get on the phone. And obviously that's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, you see, you, 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 you now I want to lose weight, get in the gym, but what, but what do you do? Right. So, so, mm-hmm. so if, if you were to just, uh, if someone were to say, get on the phone and someone says, oh, okay, yeah, I'm on it, but it's not working. What would you say? What would you do if you were to try to diagnose maybe, uh, you know, say, you know, first, second year recruiters not really doing that well and having success on the phone and they have a lot of phone time? What would you, what advice would you give them to kind of maybe write the ship? I, I think it, call, it comes down to planning. Everything in recruiting comes down to planning and organizing. You know, if you're just on the phone, I had a kid that worked for me once and he, he came in interview and says, I'm going to, I make a hundred calls a day. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> and then, you know, who, I'm like, who are you calling? He's like, I call HR people, I call the finance guy, I call the sales guy, I call the, the whoever he can find in the company. <laughs> so he would spend literally an hour, mm. he'd spend all day calling six companies, basically. Call, you know, whatever, 10, 15 people at every company, whatever the math is. But he, you know, the point was, it was just stupid calls. You, you got to plan. If you're not planned, everything is pretty much out the window. It's complete luck at that point. So what so, you're saying is if you fail to plan, the you're piece. planning to fail. There you go. Yeah. Now, now I have uh, obviously have my own um, uh, thoughts on and planning, but I will say this, you know, uh, that aside, if you were to look at, say, uh, if you're to hire a rookie, right, and you looked at somebody who was calling all the wrong people, but was on the phone like a madman or mad woman, a mad person. Sorry, I, I gendered it. My bad. You call or, it Z now, isn't it Z E or it's, something? Yeah, is yeah. So say Zer <laughs> was on the on the phone, and then you had. 
Then you had somebody else who was who meticulous, meticulously plan every little thing. All right, those two people, boom. What would you see as most potential, and why? It depends. <laughs> if you're planning and making the calls, then great. If you're just calling random right. people for no reason, like you're calling, you know, the the whatever, the you know, the chief dietitian at uh, Salesforce, but you want to talk to the VP of Sales, probably not a great use of your time. I mean, you could be, you don't, I don't think well, you're, no, but you'd, you'd develop them, right? So, so yeah. who's better for develop? I, I guess what I, where I look at person, it is the person that plans and has the motivation. Well, if okay. But here's, I guess my, my thought is my, for me, I always, always have the belief and I, and I don't know where I got this from, but I'd rather you have, uh, what we like and polish, make up for passion. Cause you can teach, you can't teach the grit and just get out there. You can teach the planning and all that, but you can't teach the, cause well, sometimes people plan just so they don't have to be on the phone. Yeah, exactly. Right. I was just going to say, but you you have to have both. If they if one guy was just calling random people and one guy was just planning on never calling, I'd fire both of them. Mm -hmm. right, but, but Rich, how much sourcing are you? Like, how much really? Like, how much does your day plan itself? Because you're and it's not pointed because I don't know how you you run your desk, but how you go after leads from mm -hmm. from where we're from talking to your candidates and really learning what's going on in the market. How much are you using that to drive that next day planning? I drive. I do a ton of it. I mean, I yeah. always get it where you're looking, who you're talking to, you know, which you know, which company would you, do you want to go to? Where do you not want to go to? And you know, you just build your list. You just keep a list right next to your desk, and or just text an admin and just say, hey, you know, put this on my calendar for tomorrow. Okay, but you yeah. make it sound so easy. But the reality is, working with so many recruiters, they don't they don't do it as a rule. The sourcing part. Is is I'm blown away by how many people don't know how to source. They make yeah. their calls. They're not. They're not asking those questions. So no, you know, it's mind-boggling to me. But th then again, listen. I mean, I deal with sales guys, and eighty percent of those people in the sales world should not be in the sales world. They should be either <laughs> either selling for the wrong company or just shouldn't be selling. Period, which is the majority of them. So it leaves you with twenty percent. And quite frankly, recruiters are no different. I mean, let's be honest. Most recruiters are just doing it as a time to. They, they got in, they fell into it for some reason. They don't want to put the real effort in. They think they're done at five o'clock. You know, they don't want to plan. I mean, like I, I get people all the time laughing at me because I'm like, I sit in front of the TV all night and just plan for the next day. You know, I get my plan. As you said, it builds on itself and then you add to it. Try to have 50 calls scheduled for the day, which nowadays is a whole lot easier than it was when we all started because you didn't have as good an ATS systems and other stuff, you know, but, you know, it takes time to plan it properly. But if you plan it right, your time is used wisely. And if you're going to bill a million bucks a year, you're making 500 bucks an hour. So unless you want to piss it away, why not? And how much you're planning is the follow-up of the, which is where most salespeople, most recruiters are also horrible, which is the, the great call or a great lead or great information or whatever it is, your reason for the first call. And then they, they have that, that, that rotating, you know, uh, AT, the rotating phone number, just one after another, after another. And there's no accountability for, there's no ownership for any one prospect. You know, how much, yeah. are you, how, how much are you, is your day filled with those things? There's, you know, I, so this market's different than it was four months ago, obviously. So in this market, uh, you know, I'm back to old school cold calling, you know, going through my list, always adding to people. And, you know, I try to call them, you know, I'll, I'll bombard people. I don't really care. Right or wrong is, you know, a lot of people think I'll call you, email you, LinkedIn to you, you know, three, four times a week, sometimes five if I really want to get you. And, you know, they're sales guys. It's not like calling accountants. These guys. Yeah. 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 The, the uh, persistence. But um, don't you love when they get, I'm sorry. Keep going. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. God, Neil, always interrupting the guests. <laughs> Neil, the <laughs> we're, we got to get the flow with the guests. It's our first guest. All right. We're good, we're good practice. <laughs> So I, I actually, so so to, to piggyback off of Neil Lebovitz's uh, uh, question, um, I wanted to find out was uh, all right. So so looking at the sales process and, and, and doing the follow up and whatnot. Uh, let's let's dive a little bit more into the sales process because I think for a lot of recruiters, even if they're on the phone a lot, one of the big problems they have is look, they're either not picking up or they pick up. They're like, yeah, we're good. Or do you have a recruiter? And there, so there's a lot of just so much competition and we're all kind of saying the same things. So what, what advice would you give to help a recruiter really differentiate themselves beyond just the persistence in terms of how they should approach this, the sales process or what are your thoughts behind that? The process or the call? Uh, really? Well, the call is part of the process, right? So, yeah. so really, I guess from the call through the whole, whole process, really. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and I flip flop back and forth. I used to be a strict MPC guy. It's just MRI 101. You just do MPCs the whole way. You know, in this market, I've been trying to do more, you know, fluffier, more gentle touches. It's not it's not really my style, so it's taken a little getting used to, to be honest with you. I, I generally like to call and just be a little bit more brash. And it's like, hey, listen, are you a buyer or a seller? You know, I mean, listen, if you think your company's not going to pull through this thing, then send me your resume. If you do, then why don't you become a rock star? And this is the time to basically plant your flag, build your team, and come out of this thing shining. Mm-hmm. And they say, hey, great. Or, you know, what do you got? Or what do you got? But we, you, it turns into some kind of conversation, and that's all you really want. Okay. Um, you know, and I'm also a big believer of asking for the deal, you know, on the first call. I don't, you know, I'm not a big fan of, let me schedule something three weeks from Tuesday. You know, by then 17 other contingent guys have already stolen that search. So what happens when they, when they do want to schedule it? How do you, what do you, what do you tell them? And I could, I could already tell sort of what your approach is, but yeah, for, I mean, for again, the noobs out there, <clears throat> for the noobs out there, you know, <clears throat> I tell them if I, if I have an NPC, then I'm going to tell them, listen, we can schedule it, you know, in an hour, <laughs> you know, but this guy's going to be gone next week. Or, you know, listen, if you can't, if you're not ready to hire, that's fine. You know, we'll have other people, but you're going to miss a rock star. You know, it's something along those lines. It's, you know, it can be overly aggressive. So, 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 so from overall philosophy, just to make sure I understand, so, so overall philosophy is really just drive hard, drive fast, yeah. uh, don't wait, and always be pushing for the close no matter where you're at. I mean, you say it like that, it sounds a little harsher than it is, but yeah. I no, mean, I'm not saying that yeah, but you know what I mean. No, but, no, but it's all, it's always going. I mean, I just don't see, I have no patience, period. Mm-hmm. I've got ADD. I got a thousand things I'm doing on myself. I have a part-time admin and then I do the rest of this business all by myself. And I don't have time to wait. If you don't, if you're not interested, great. Just don't waste my freaking time. Let's move forward. We'll talk again when you're ready. I'm okay with that. So, you know what? It's a, it's a catch 22 for a lot of people because yeah. you're, you, you exude this confidence Right. And and you that just absolutely comes across on the phone with someone has to. Right. Yeah. And so that that goes. So people have to figure out a way to <clears throat> to get that. Right. And that's the hard thing. But but as we talked about several weeks ago with ask for the damn order, get aggressive, get assertive. If what I would love is, is if you find there's a job there and you know it's there and they blow you off. I never understood why people are so passive. Like, go yeah. crazy. Say anything you want. <laughs> if they're not going to give you an opening or a send out when they have a position there that they're going through another agency, you're never going to get it. So well, go I mean, out I, swinging, right? Well, like a couple of days ago, I, I called in a company. The guy's like, hey, we're not using that outside recruiter. So I'm like, yeah, you sure you are. <laughs> you know, and he, <laughs> yeah, sure. And he's like, I'm like, you're using my buddy Dave out in California for a search. <laughs> That's he's awesome. Like, and you just said it just like that, right? Just. Yeah. I mean, because what do you have to lose? You have nothing to lose. Well, my, mean, my, my, well, my, my thought on that is, is obviously, you know, asking for business, it, it does take a little bit of nuance. It does, you know, to your point, take a lot to take some confidence. I've always thought that it's kind of like, uh, it, it's, it's a sort of, um, uh, emotional leverage where at a certain point you get tired of being glad and I'm tired. I'm just tired of not building. And, and for a lot of people, they're afraid to, to go for the close. At a certain point, they say, you know what? Screw it. I don't, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm just going to go for it. And granted, they may do it very clumsily, but eventually they get better and they get better. Cause I think a lot of times if you do it for years, you, you have a skill that's innate that you don't really know how to, how to necessarily articulate and show somebody how, how to do it until they just go in and get it, get it done. But I think it takes a lot of just emotional leverage where at a certain point you say, you know what? I'm not going to get off the phone until I ask for business, even if it's done clumsily in the wrong way, at least I want to do it. And eventually you get better at it. But it's that emotion. You need that emotional leverage to make it happen. You know, yeah. Most people aren't jerks at the end of the day. They're not going to just laugh at you. They're not going to just hang. I mean, worst thing to do is hang up on you. Who cares? But I got to tell you, when I like, cause I, I honestly think a lot of times my cold calls for new jobs, they're not always the best because I just haven't done them as much because I've had so much inflowing business. So it's not really been my strength, quite frankly. But, and I was, you know, I was, even a couple of days ago, I was kind of like struggling with it a little bit. I didn't like my pitch or whatever. And I, and then I started making some calls for a couple of jobs I'm working on. And I just, I don't know, it just clicked again that I'm like how dumb it is because a cold call for a candidate is the exact same call as for a client. Yeah. You just don't have, you just get, you overthink it because you're thinking I got to ask for money. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't fucking care. I don't need the money. I want the money. <laughs> you know, so what do I care? A lot you of know? ways. Well, I mean, I, oh, well, 
a lot of ways what we do is like, it's like, it's like talking to girls, right? And I always use the analogy a lot, but for me, it's- You do, you're a horny bastard. I know, but it, but I tell you, some of the, my, a lot of my sales things I've really learned from, from that era of my life where, you know, a, 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 you know, guys will, uh, you know, they didn't had a girlfriend before, they're young, they don't know what this, you know, it's, it's a huge fear for, for young men and they overthink it. What, what if this, what if that, what if, you know, I had a guy once tell me years and years ago, I was trying to get him to go out and, and talk to girls. And he's like, what if they slap me? It happens in the movies. That's not real. It's in your head. What if they it slap you right. Yeah, yeah. If, he said, if he goes and says hi and they don't like me, they say like that never you happens. Brute. And they call him a brute. That, that yeah, happens and, all the time. And so go go talk and you realize you're not gonna die. Just talk. And if they don't like you, they don't like you. Okay, go go somebody else. Whatever. Who gives you? Eventually, talking. eventually you'll get good at just talking, and then next thing you know, you then it's then there's no pressure, it's just a conversation. But I think it's a lot of young salespeople and recruiters. They get this shit in their head. They, 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 what they do is they, is they, 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 they try to predict the person's behavior before they call. Mm -hmm. Just don't predict it. Just go into the call and just let, let it ride, man. Well, I think pe people over, they overanalyze it. They overthink it. They, they, they think you're, they, they're taught, well, never ask a question that's going to get a no. Oh my God! Yeah, the, the yes train. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Little yes questions lead to the yeah. yeah come on. Yes, for bad. Is it a bad time versus a good time? I'm like, oh, none of that shit works. You know, alternative <laughs> choice. Yeah. So what yeah. would work now? Would you like to meet my candidate at 10:30 tomorrow or 1:30? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm through you, Jew boy. Is what I get when I try that one. That yeah. doesn't work too well. <laughs> yeah. No, no. It's, it's just you be yourself. You be natural, and you'll be fine. And, you know, if you if you plan, if you know your plan, I mean, it all comes back to the planning. If you know your plan, you're going through your plan. If you believe in what you're doing, then it will come across in the phone. If you're talk, talking to an, a VP or a CEO or whoever you're talking to, and you've got actually a real tr talk track about what's going on in your vertical, your industry, or with a great candidate, then you got something to say. Like, so it's been interesting trying to do these marketing calls without an MPC, to be honest with you. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, one other piece of advice I give, give for the folks listening that for the, for the fine, beautiful people listening, and bless you are beautiful. Um, it is this, well, actually, well, hold on a second. Before I even give this advice, I will say this. If, uh, uh, Richie, Rich Rosen promised us, he, as he swore up and down that he would answer any question that anybody posed to him in the comments, no matter how personal or embarrassing. And he'd do it honestly. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know why he did that, but he did. So please post your questions down there. It would there be professional or personal he said he'd answer it. i don't know so feel free to post anything but anyway back to my point uh but thank you for promising that rich um so so my my advice is uh for a lot of folks uh, to to get comfortable on these calls and know what to say because a lot of times people say well i don't know what to to really say or get into in discussion like what do i really know uh and i say you know every call you have try to get information with the market try to get information about what's going on their fears their pains etc and as soon as somebody says something really cool like you said you know they're frustrated because of blank write that down exactly and on your next call use that you know hey you know i'm hearing this thing da, 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 da. are you hearing that and then and what's going on you're going to get better conversations and then and you'll be seeing more of an expert you know you could be an expert in six you're an expert in a month if you literally just use every single conversation as leverage into the next conversation next and how many month. people do that that right right that be so simple but how many people go into their ats and write down what they just learned or the hot buttons that this person told you get into an emotional discussion about what's making them tick and that's it they just have, never use it again it's great. You know, yeah. it, can I can I can I give a little plug for a tool that I'm helping out that I I use just for this part. This is part of what I do. That, that I want to offend the, the the sensitive rules of the show. But uh, <laughs> we've never had a guest, so so you you're, go. you're 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 you know trailblazing. It's, it's, it's a good freebie for 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 listeners. The um, so there's a company called Track um, TRAQ 360. Is that right? Let me just double. Oh yeah, that. Track 365. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, right, I'm 30, aware of them. I use. Oh, them. look at you, yeah. David. Yeah, right I, I heard about them through Rich. There you go. It's a free, it's, you know, it's free, so they're not charging anything. But it records your call. It transcribes the whole thing. It will break it down by if you're using a microphone. Like it doesn't work for me because I'm on speakers, so it, it just does as one, one, one channel. But if you do it as a what most normal people have a microphone, it will uh, you know splits up the call. You can really break it down. It does the analysis, but it will track a little stuff like this. What do you mean it breaks it down? Like there's a, there's an expert at the end that breaks it down for you and analyzes it. It's like an AI engine at the end, so it'll like it'll can do some analysis for you. Oh, so it's, it's all AI. It's so saying you sound a little nervous or you didn't sound confident or it was uh, 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 too much talking. They're, they're building up to that. If you like, there's a, 
big company called Gong that's like the major. That well, you're just name dropping left and right. Do you get Dong? paid for these guys? I try, I try oh. getting, getting Gong as a client, but they're, Dong? They're, they're they're charged like tens of thousands of dollars. This one's you know it's a starter package. You know it's a Why it's just a, it's company cool. Dong. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very professional. Hey, yeah. from Dong. <laughs> not a D. Hey, yeah. Dong I, I still love the word dongle. I still, I, I'm 56 years old. I still laugh when someone says dongle. Isn't that crazy? Like the little stuff that, you know, you never lose a kid in you. The, the stuff you laughed at a 10, you're still laughing. I know? do, I do. Dongle, still funny. Fart jokes, farts are innately funny. I have if a Tesla. You notice, fart machine kids, they're innately funny. If you get a Tesla, Tesla has a fart machine in it. Dude, oh, my, really? My brother has one. Where? where? Really? You tell him to look at admissions testing. Really? So, yeah, because it's funny. Everyone loves a fart. Everyone yeah, I had my car. It was a ride. He was dying. It's like wow. It was, do you have a Tesla? What do you got? What kind of toys? You got a Tesla? I have an X. Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. What other <laughs> big toys you got? Make them make him jealous out there. Well, what other big toys you got? You got a big <laughs> boat. What kind of boat you got? <laughs> I, whatever my wife buys is what I have. What kind of boat you got? I boats are holes in the water. I have friends with boats. Boats I are. I, I had a client that came and picked me up last year. I have I have a bunch of rental houses in Newport. If anyone wants to rent a house the first two weeks of July, we still have two weeks open. <laughs> but the um, the in Newport, Rhode Island, right by the beach, feel free. The uh, but my client came and picked me up uh, in, his, in his buddy's boat. It was a hundred and fifty five foot super yacht, nine crew. The whole that that was that was a boat. <laughs> and he's not happy because he wants a two hundred fifty foot one. I've, well, every one of them. I've never met a boat owner that's happy with their boat. This guy, this guy cracked me up. So he had this hundred fifty five foot yacht, and then he had a he just he cruises around the world in, and then he has another ninety foot yacht in Lake Michigan that he controls with his iPhone. No, crew oh, on. really? <laughs> yeah. How cool is that? So, what do you mean he controls with his iPhone? The, he, not the the boat he's on. Yeah, no, the boat in Lake Michigan. He just drives with his iPhone. Uh, so, you're you're confusing me. You're uh, you're are there are there demons in there? I don't understand your world. You know how you test the Tesla? You can drive with your iPhone. It can summon you. It can come to the car. It will come to your phone. The boat you can just steer with your phone. Same thing. Wow. I wasn't even paying attention. What are we talking about, guys? <laughs> yeah, it's the recruiting boats. <laughs> uh, I, I, was, I was focused on on that dong quit thing. It just it just <laughs> really just. Um, we do have a, a couple questions here from from the listeners uh, that uh, they're viewers, I think Rich, viewers as well. Are, are viewers. So uh, first off, from um, this uh, uh, this this handsome young fella here, what are your preferred pronouns? What are your preferred pronouns, Rich? <laughs> the, your, the public wants to know, sir. What are your preferred pronouns? That was a handsome viewer. Da I like very like very a fella. viewer. I don't want to assume he's a fella. Sorry, my I, exactly. I, so I don't sure, had some good questions, but what what do you prefer pronouns, Rich? I mean, honestly, pronouns. I, treat, I don't have time for the pronoun thing. I just treat everyone the same. I'm like, I, I, I so you want I'm, me to to refer you to as Rich all the time? You know, Rich said this, and or did you for, 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 or we talk about yourself? You're you know. here on the phone. I don't have time to figure out what you are. I'm like, I, I don't what, know. I'm offended. What's your favorite pro What's a good answer for that, DSP? What's but, a good answer for a favorite pronoun? I you you. Who gives yeah. a fuck? That's why that's my word answer. That. That's my that's my sorry. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry. I just like and, oh so hey, so here's a better question. This actually comes from uh, uh, a a real life user, Rich. I know you call a lot of high level people. Um, number one, how do you get past the secretary? If no secretary, what message do you leave on their voicemail? Okay. Could Ooh, I just say, let's call them administrative assistants. We're not in 1950. Okay. How do you get past the stewardess? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I think we lost a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're on a roll. We're in the same budget. Yeah, go ahead. Answer that. Uh, how do I? How do I? How do you get past the dames and, at the and, front office? And, there? And, and and that yeah. question was asked by Maureen <laughs> no, Nolson Mossman, by the way. Ma Maureen, sorry, we, Maureen. We, we almost never. Is he still talking? <laughs> we still. We never. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm sorry, Rich. Please go. <laughs> We're this. This generally not. Um, we generally don't have a lot of secretaries or admins or chief of staffs that really can't get in the way anymore. Be honest with you, and I just leave my general voicemails just like, Hey, it's Rich Rosen at Cornerstone. Just following up on an email I sent you, give me, give me a ring. Or, you know, if I have a really great MPC and I know they've got the opening, or I know there's someone to talk to, I'll leave a message pretty much along those lines too. It's like, Hey, I've got this, you know, I let, just following up on an email I sent you. I've got this great guy who's done X, Y, and Z. 
knows, you know, whatever, something along those lines. Or, you know, again, this market's different. This market, I'm saying, hey, I know, if, I'm not sure if your competitor, if you're hiring, I know your competitors are, give me a call. Um, whatever, whatever really comes out. That's probably the one area I'm not the most bland in, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I got to, you know, when I come up with the curriculum, I definitely have to teach. I want to teach people A, B, and C, literally A, B, and C is, is what they do. And X, yeah. Y, and Z. So they can say, what did you do? I did A, B, and C and uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, you know, because I, I love that. I got to come up with a way to do that. Yada, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. And with ABC Corporation. Yeah. <laughs> Once a while, DEF, but you never Dong. get like... <laughs> <laughs> You are you are you're really very focused on the dong. If you thing. interview a new recruiter, I'm dong material rich through and through. I'll be I'll be your biggest dong biller. I dong you know, it. I gotta I'm trying to learn from you, David. I call that trying to increase my DS penis. <laughs> no, 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 DSP N E S S, DSP Ness. DSP Ness. My ability to be more like I, I, I thought right. the agent. But hey, you, you may have uh, just done it right there. And there's another sponsor. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good thing we had those sponsors. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, we're negative. There's no girls. Are there any women on the show? <laughs> this is yeah. This is the, we have we have a, we have a lot of learning to do, gentlemen. We need to take time to reflect on our uh, our, our toxic. Anyway, so moving on. Um, let's talk about some news. I mean, we have some so lots of yeah, news going we do. on. We do. That, we have we, some news and. Uh, Everybody want to hear what Richie Rich has to say about Where's that was lame. That was great. All right. Richie like dong 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 dong. So uh let's talk about this one. So this was all over the news. This happened as we know uh during the week on uh June eighth. <laughs> which will actually happen the day before. But if we remember, the Bureau of Labor Statistics made that gigantic error. Stock market went crazy, and it turns out that they were wrong. How does that happen? So the BLS said that the jobless rate was 13.3%, and it was really 16.3%, right? Because the people who were working during the survey uh, that were expected to return to their jobs, they were classified as... Uh, as it was going back rather than employed, but absent from work. So anyway, long story short, this is all part of like the whole deal with the PPP. How does the government mess it up that badly? Is part A of the question. And B, <laughs> stock market goes nuts over it. And then after the error comes out, they're like, yeah, we'll let that pass. We'll let That's why I'm a libertarian because I, I, I always believe that as the government grows bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, it gets more, more uh, incompetent and incompetent and incompetent. And so, uh, but that is just my own personal belief. But they that, are the that's Bureau right. of Labor Statistics. This is all these people do. Right? Our statistic like what damn lies. There's three types of lies: lies, damn lies, and statistics. Is that, <laughs> is that the phrase? The of damn lies. The phrase? Right, but it's well, well, Rich, what, what, please, sir, enlighten us on your, on your, on your thoughts. Elucidate on. Elucidate. Yes, my small word of the day, elucidate all over the subject to hand. On, on the lovely uh, screw up by the government yet again for the miss, the, their just disaster of a st statistical process. Well, and and I, 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 this might help you with it. They said that and they went out of their way because they were grilled that it was politically based. <laughs> so they said they said nothing to do with political meddling. I don't know. I honestly, I think the media is the the media is is the bigger problem to blame for everything. Like personally, I think. Are the, you going? Are you talking lamestream media? Is that where you're going right now? Are you going to get so. political on us? No, it's not even political. It's just a fact. <laughs> the the both both sides are broken. Both sides are. Oh man, yeah, I, I'll tell you. So no one will get aggravated with me because you'll, you'll. I guess everyone will get aggravated with me. I'm with you. I think both sides are horrific. They drive me nuts. Both of them. How you can one someone is super one sided or the other makes no sense to me, you know. And the the only the only thing that's guaranteed we're all going to lose in this next election. So it's really there's really not a win a win out of this thing. But the 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 stat the labor stat thing I don't understand. That's that's the whole market is a crapshoot right now. You got you got a hundred rich guys basically playing the market. I think it was a one percent of the I think it was the top like hundred people in the country or wealthiest people own thirty eight percent of equities, all equities. You know, so they're just playing chess with everyone. They're just they're you know they're playing another game that most of us have no insight into. You know, and then you get and then you yeah. flip the side your PPP thing, which is the big because you know, they keep changing the rules yeah. every 
that thing comes out. Much probably left over now too from that, which is nuts. Yeah, I mean, so you pretty much everyone. I don't know why you even have to fill out a form to say, hey, I need, uh, you know, just I need my loan cleared or whatever because. Yeah, now you have what twenty four weeks to figure out how to write off your, the money you got. I mean, what a waste of time. Oh, and listen to you, Mister Tesla Millionaire. <laughs> like for a lot of people, it's it's they need the money. No, hey, you listen, I, I I want the money. I took my PPP money. My business. what? How? I didn't take um, mine. I didn't take mine. I I took I took I lost I'm park uh, like, my kids. I lost seven deals because of PPP because of fucking COVID. That's like what like two hundred grand. So why Listen would you, to you. Listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I look, like, and, and I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, I think for the way I look at it, yeah, you, you, what X percent of the population, you know, 38 people own 30% or whatever. I think I just learned the play by the rule, not to play by the rules of the game, but le learn, navigate the waters, be willing, the, for the way I look, be willing to change, but yeah. keep driving forward. Don't, don't be, don't be out there, be a victim and whine about this, whine about that. There are markets out there. There are people wanting to get hired. There are people wanting to hire other people and, yeah. and, and people tend to, they, they do this shit there, all listen, day there's long. A, there's just plenty like, oh, of people, no. recruiters, Dylan. Let, let, let's uh, let's throw this one up because this is always right. what I tell people. So so rich, if you don't mind, uh, maybe I mean you can if you don't want to give the direct answer, give a percentage. But what mm -hmm. I'll tell people is when the well, if you have a million dollar bill or they're billing eight hundred thousand dollars a year and they're having a crappy time because of COVID, what mm -hmm. does that mean you're down to, Rich? Six hundred out of it, you drop you're down thirty yeah, percent from no. from dude. I mean, listen, I don't I don't I don't care if people know what I bill or not. I mean, who the hell cares? No, what, what what are you billing now? What are you billing? I mean, I'm at like three hundred for the year. So you have 300 for the year, right? And that's, so that's a crappy year for you, right? Yeah. Because of COVID. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't thrill me. You know, you can only do like 700,000 for the year. And that's that you're down 30% or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, you're down. But I'm saying it's all relative, right? That's what's so yeah. funny. People got to understand. No, you can, I, like, it's like, it's all within the, that, that pie, that world that you want to operate in. So well, for but, you, God, 700,000, I'm down. Like, I'm not happy with what I'm doing. And for others, they'll, they'll be dying. Their best year is 300,000. Yeah, I mean, but you know, everyone's got expenses, and you you tend to live, or your wife tends to spend to your expenses. You know, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, or, or your divorce, or your divorce. I was good up until the divorce. Well, that's that's even more expensive. I'm too cheap yeah. for that. <laughs> I should have been smart. Yeah, you, you got to suck it up. You got to tough it out. So you know, I got Spenderella over there who just goes and you know, buys whatever. So you got to, and she works, but she's got you know, she's got big taste. So big taste costs. Big money. So you're on. You're on tape, my friend. Be very yeah, careful. Yeah. Very careful. Yeah, yeah, I've been up before. It's all right. I have no really? secret. <laughs> we could just create a video of you talking about her. Yeah, she. Nothing she hasn't heard. Oh, <laughs> good or bad. We had another question come in from one of our. Uh, <laughs> what a good-looking wow. viewer. Yeah, and he's very, he's very engaged. He's engaging with the show, which but you know what he is. But yeah, I would kind of cover amazing. that face up with some facial hair to, you know, yeah. you know what I mean, to like he's very, soften very, it up a little bit. Very stoic, <laughs> almost statuesque. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say Adonis necessarily because that'd be kind of weird. But uh, you know, I'm not, not, not saying it. But but he's let's got a lot of the DS penis. Let's get a lot of DS penis. But let's not talk. Let's talk about the question at hand. That should be your new merch there. What's the biggest? <laughs> what's the biggest your change in strategy for the rest of the year, Rich? What's What's my biggest change in my strategy for the rest of the year? Yeah, like what's What's What What are you going to do differently to adjust? Because I think that's going to help others as you look at this kind of new economy. What can they do as well to to adjust to to this? I, I mean, honest to God, I don't. I don't. I don't think there's a whole lot more to adjust. I think you just focus. You pick your targets. You work smart. I don't think you need to make this this monumental shift in your business. I mean, unless you're in oil and gas, and which is toast, you know. I mean, look at your market. Like you know, like Neil said. I mean, there are people hiring in every market. I've gotten a few deals done. You know, I mean, I know a lot of workers are getting a few deals done. You know, it, it just you know, if your market's completely, if you're in hotels and you know, retail. You know, maybe you go look someplace else for a little while. But yeah, for the good. most, you know. I don't know. Just fight through it. The market's going to come back. Well, you know, know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm charging five percent from here on in. <laughs> Smart. Five percent placements. I'll, I like I'll, it. I'll pay you to hire my candidates. No, no, God, none of this low ball fee garbage. I mean, but, I'm still at, no. That's, God, a, that's no. a solid strategy. No, 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 no. Not no. You, you know as well as I. Obviously, it's going to all these guys that are charging five or ten percent. They're toast. I oh mean, my God, who that? You know, how do you even have the the fortitude and the 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 gumption 
or the lack <laughs> of gumption. Which the gump, the, whatever that. What, what's the root of gumption? They don't have enough gump, or they it's have too much gump. It's one or the other, gump. right? It's embarrassing. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. that, I, that is like that is just that's that's the those are the people that ruin this whole business. I tell you what, I'm going to do. How much will it take you to be right to be to put you in this car today? Actually. Yeah. What? Actually, you know what? I love those people. I love them. You know why? Because it. it I, I really think if you go into an, uh, into a market with lots of like super commodity, low level, you know, chart, you know, that's ripe for an opportunity to to go in as a high quality leader. It takes a lot more education, obviously, uh, but I think I, I like it because it's it's a it's a good it, it's something to push against on. If you don't have anything to push against on, you know, because oh, yeah, and if, they, if they get to say it's impossible to do the business. Yeah, if, if you deliver if, anything good, if, if if you're if you're an order taker, it's different. But if you're if you really educate on uh, or you really pivot off of, uh, you know, the the, the poor service and, and the needs not getting fulfilled for low cost providers, that, that know, really provides a lot of ammunition to pivot off of. You know what I mean? So I kind of like those providers. Personally. The problem is now all these leaders have been neutered, like at least in the software world. They're all getting neutered. All these these guys, all these ladies that are running the show, they all have to answer to HR and the finance guys now. So they don't have any control. So like, well, we're paying this guy 10%. I can't help that they're not finding you guys. We're paying them 10%. Oh, ridiculous. It, it, it's right. this argument. I mean, it's, just, it's, a, it's like it's almost a, almost a pointless battle in many cases. You know? next, next news story, just so we'll keep it moving. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm the, Neil. I'm, the new, I'm the news guy. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So uh, dong, this dong, one, dong. this one's interesting. Uh, dong, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, a document was filed with the California Public Utilities Commission, and basically they're saying that Uber and Lyft drivers should be employees, not contractors. Let's talk about that for a second, because I got a lot of thoughts on that little thing. Yeah, I, I was talking Lyft. I, don't, I, I, I think that's a bad idea. Yeah. Very why? Bad idea. Why? Well, I think it's purely for selfish reasons. Here's what okay, oh, well, let, let's, I have my own thoughts, but let's let's let Rich elucidate. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, oh, I okay, well, well, so, okay. So yeah. that's what my reasons. I mean, I think I think I'm, I'm a libertarian. I think people should be free to barter and trade and sell their services without the, the, the without the heavy hand of the government. But you know what this this bill did in California? It ruined the an entire economy of independent writers. I don't know if you guys know about this, but a lot of uh, writer, uh, most writers in California that were independent because they were they would sell an article here, article there, article there. Then they put restrictions on companies saying you can they, you can only sell like thirty six articles in a year. It killed in one one bill. It killed the entire writing the, the independent writing industry in California because these companies now they'll just say, well, we can't hire any independent writers in California, so all these article writers we'll just hire them out of Texas, wherever, and it. All these writers that supported this bill initially are now are screaming because they've lost their 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 entire income. Because when you get government involved, they they they're fucking sorry, they're an idiot. They don't know, you know, and un, un, be known soon. They thought, well, yeah, we're protecting them. No, you just basically neutered that industry, and now they can't they can't make any money. And and the proof is there. So my thought on it is, you get government involved, they're gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it, and in the name of progress, that's just the way I look at it. Hey. Well, it's a free market business. I mean, it, you know, it, it's that's what they signed up yeah. for. Exactly, you know? free market. If you want to be, I mean, this is the thing. This isn't the nineteen, you know, nineteen, you know, twenties or whatever. You don't. The unions don't really matter, in in my opinion. If you don't like the job, find another one. Especially now. I mean, there, even in this market, there are plenty of jobs. There are plenty of people hiring. Like whether it's, if you don't at that level of work, or work especially. You know, so I don't know. I always think there's a better opportunity if you want it. You just have to work a little harder for it. That's, and that's why I'm a capitalist. If I can in my head, capitalist pig. Yeah, there you go. Right there. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Like my favorite hat. I like that. I like it. <laughs> so I only got my socks out. Oh, Neil is, uh, <laughs> Neil, I can't hear you, Neil. We lost you, Neil. I think he's, he's, he might have, he've, he've, he's moved on from this mortal coil. Yeah. <laughs> another word of the day. I moved on to another plane. I can't hear you. Neil is not. Let me try this here. We'll do that. Oh, this show's got a lot more attractive. That's there cool. you go. Put my hat back on. You put it back in the stream and see if this works. Like Neil, try now maybe? <laughs> no, I can't. No. I can hear Neil. Now he's, might be his internet connection. Because see, he's, he's super choppy right now. Yeah. It's the second time when he flipped to the, his little graphics camera. That's what earlier... 
His bandwidth went down. Hey, Neil, can you, how about now? Can, can you hear us? Yeah, Neil can hear us, but he can't hear Neil. Uh, so I, I'm very good at reading lips. So here, so we're going to do this. So Neil is going to talk, and I'm going to read lips. So Neil, if you could start talking, and we are going to read lips. All right, here we go. I've always been jealous of DSP. I've always found him to be so super attractive, really manly, but not too much manly in a way, because he's also very sensitive, but in a manly way. And I've always thought that, you know, I wish I can – <laughs> uh, okay. Rich, you want to try? You want to read some lips? No, no, no. I will get myself in trouble. <laughs> Come on, you can't get in trouble here. This is only public. I'll get myself in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and Neil, it's, yeah, and he, I see, it, and also Neil with his graphics, he has these like little red eyes, almost like demon eyes. Isn't yeah, that kind of weird? It's uh, it's, it's, it's almost demonic. It's kind of kind of freaking me out, man. Freaking me out, man. <laughs> Oh man, um, I want to be in the news section, but we can't can't hear you at all, Neil. Can't hear you at all. Oh God, dang, Neil! <laughs> <laughs> all right, this show is go it's gone off the rails very very quickly. Oh, um, all right, let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna keep going. We're we're gonna make this. We have eight minutes left, and oh, right. Neil, okay, Neil is actually just dropped from the call, so he's probably going to try to come back in, and uh, so until then. Uh, so what's the other, so Neil usually sends me the news because I, I, I ain't got time to read the news. So Neil sends me the stuff. Cause I think he's, he's, I think he just lounges around all day. I don't know what he does. I'm not sure. Um, he just kind of lounges around in, in his, in his, uh, in his, in his, uh, little kimono. He wears, do you know he wears a kimono? That's, that's, it's, it's a look. It's a look. Well, there's nothing else. It's just a kimono every day. Um, and it's just what is his, his thing. He just lies around in a kimono, uh, you know, sitting on a chase lounge, Drinking his apple teeny and um, loving life. That's, that's, I'm not gonna nice to leave, especially in the summer. Neil's up in yeah, Neil's up in is he up in New York. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna it, it, well I figures that's that's you know I'm not you gonna judge. I, like, no. I love Neil for who he who he what he brings to the table. Neil Lebovitz, but <laughs> but let's not talk about about uh about the old things. Tell about you, Rich. So um I guess we're we're almost done with this call. What would you say if you can give us some like just last your last your last advice right just to, your parting advice for the people who are struggling and figuring like what do i do and they're they can't get job orders and and they and maybe just getting on the phone really quite isn't enough like they need a little bit more meat on the bone what would you say that meat should be i, I think if you are planned and you 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 know if it's you do whatever's easier for you. if you're planned and you have an mpc candidate call with the candidate you you know you're confident in it you know what it's about you know, you got a story to tell. Just script, write it out, write the script, and call. I mean, there's, there, if you can't, if you've got a paralysis of the phone, if you're fear, afraid of the phone, you're just dead in the water in this business. Good market or bad market, it makes no difference. So, I mean, there's there, there's no tricks to this job, and there really aren't. I mean, let there's there's guys you know that are super smooth and silver tongue. They always have the right answer. I got to tell you, I'm not one of them. I'm not the smoothest speaker. I'm not a great writer. I just just get on. I just keep doing it. That's all you, and that's really, that's all you have to do. Every, most of the big billers I know, most of the guys in Pinnacle, they either are incredibly slick or they just really work hard, you know, and but they all work hard. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that, but some just talk better than others. You don't. Yeah. That's a big, big thing. People don't need to be, I always hear this all the time from students. I'm not a natural salesperson. You don't need to be. You do mm -hmm. not need to be a natural salesperson. In fact, sometimes being a natural salesperson can work against you because it, yeah. it's 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 always a ceiling, it's a crutch. Yeah, you depend on it, and you can't depend on it. You, you know, you need to learn the skills of sales and 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 what and persistence. And I think too many people uh, just use that as a crutch, and they also use it as an excuse that they don't have it. Right? I, mean, I mean, look, look, look at Rich. He didn't use his looks as an excuse not to do what? a Facebook live with us. <laughs> He did not. And look at him now. Good for him. There you Good go. for him. Same for the occasion almost. Good for yeah. him. I'm so yeah, proud yeah. of you, Neil. You Rich, go. whatever your name is. <laughs> oh, you guys look alike, you know. <laughs> uh, I can't, I can't, I can't tell my uh, whether well, yeah, I don't do get on I don't go live with my 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 readers on, but when as soon as I'm off, I'm like boop, put these things back on because I can't there see shit. Go. There you I go. I, see I, shit. I, th I take these off and I can't see a whole lot either. Yeah, yeah that's uh uh, getting old sucks, man. Getting old sucks. But you look great for seventy. But that said, let's. Um, <laughs> well, I guess we'll wrap this up. Uh, Rich, whatever your name. Oh, yeah, the, the other guy I'm talking to, I can't see. 
but thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure, actually. You are our first guest, our first inaugural guest, and probably, and I think our best guest yet. Thank you. <laughs> it's an honor. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, Neil is uh, will come back for the next uh, show if we let him back. But with all that said, guys, I really appreciate you watching this. The replay will be up a lot faster nowadays. That was my fault. Um, and um, with that said, folks, peace out. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Hey, thank you for watching Headhunters and Boxers Talking Smack. Who doesn't love Headhunters and Boxers? And who doesn't love Talking Smack? Join the show every Friday, 12 noon Eastern, live in the Headhunter and Executive Recruiter community. Make sure you click one of these boxes here and watch some of these videos or something. I don't know what's going on here. I just work here.